and welcome back to Math T UK. I hope you're all well in this second run of lockdowns that we're having. And yeah, again, this isn't a fishing video. I'm not able to get out at the moment. However, I am finding things to do in my spare time, hence this little video. So you already know the subject, because you've clicked on it already. Now then, lock picking, what's all that about? What's going on? Well, first and foremost, before I continue with this video, I have to say everything is done, full disclosure. You must be up front with what you're doing, how you do it, and take everybody through the entire process to show that you're not cheating in any way. Because apparently there are plenty of cheats out there. There are plenty of people that will quite happily deceive you into saying that they're picking locks when they're not. They've actually done something to the lock after they've picked it to make it easier so that they can do it all on live on or for your entertainment but they're, they're, they're being a little bit sly so some people are guilty of doing that so I watch just a few uh, people um, most mostly I watch the lock picking lawyer because these videos are very short uh, so lock picking lawyer I watch Bosnian Bill I watch lock noob and also the helpful lock picker now the helpful lock picker he has a series of videos which will take you from uh, basic what is a lock to high-end lock picking with all sorts of different stuff going on I am absolutely brand new to this I'm a couple of weeks in I do have my lock picking kit I do have my vice I'll show you those bits later uh, and I also have already managed to hack into these locks Yeah, there is one more missing off that list, and that is a combination lock, which it's up here somewhere. I'm not sure where it is, but yeah, I've managed to do that as well, and that uses a different technique again. I'm currently into my single pin picking. My biggest success so far is a Abus 6550 uh, using counter rotation. If you don't know what that is, I totally get it. I didn't two weeks ago, I do now. Uh, so that was my latest success. I have opened a very difficult lock, but that was fluke. And I'll show you that later. And I, it did open up on me, and it, I was just rumbling around. Wasn't really concentrating on what I was doing. And it, I was just watching a, a video, and all of a sudden it clicked open, and, and, it, and there you go. So I did it, but I have no idea of the binding order. I don't know, I don't know what was going on with it. Anyway... Never mind that. Let's have a look at some locks. Let's have a look how vulnerable you actually are. Now, unbelievably, you go out and you buy locks and you see them hang, hanging in stores, B&Q, markets and all these different places and you buy a padlock and you go, that'll be alright that. Do you know what? Some of them are absolutely you, you might as well have tie it up with string. That's how bad they are. You might as well tie them up with string because they are very, very vulnerable. And it wasn't until I started watching the subject did I realise that too. So, whether you're watching Real World Discovery or MAFT UK, welcome. Let's have a look at a lock and let's get some lock picking done. And cheers. So this is my first lock picking kit. Um, I bought it on the internet and I paid about £24 for it. Yes, it's budget, but it's a good starter kit. There's lots going on there. Each pick has different names and some of them are quite relevant and, and they're, they're obvious when you, when, you, when you hear what they call them and why they call them. So, let's well, like, like half diamond on these here, half diamonds, and then you've got standard hooks. Don't know what, what that one's called. We have the City Rake, the Wave Rakes, not sure what that one's called, I don't know what that one's called, but that one is a snowman. So, you know, I'm learning the names of, of the different types of picks themselves as well, so it's all very interesting stuff. Now, you can't just use picks, you need tensioning bars, and this pick set came with tensioning bars, all those from the left this way. These I bought separately. I think it was from Sparrows. I'm not quite sure. I can't remember. But yeah, these, these came with the kit. And each one is required to tension the lock before you can open it.
Now I've not seen a lock picker yet without one of this type of vice or something similar. This is a £20 hobby vice they call it from Stanley. It's totally adjustable with that ball joint there. It goes onto my bench on my office desktop and I, I really like it. It doesn't go on my um, reloading bench, it's too deep. My reloading bench is too deep for it but it's perfect for this and it's more comfortable and I sit watching videos when I do this anyhow so there you go that's that's the, the vice. So here are my locks now you are looking at this see-through lock now this is a training lock and it basically shows you how locks work themselves so it came with this this kit that I bought so there's, there's actually a few more like it they came with the kit and it enables you to see how locks work so you get a better understanding of what's going on within your system so that was the very first padlock I actually picked and they are a little bit different from real padlocks but it does give you a better understanding of what's going on the first lock I actually picked was this yellow one here this Rolston or Rolson. Um, I moved on to the Master uh, I then got to a Defiance and then watching another video I got to these two here which is combination locks I watched how to do that and I've done that now came over to this egret lock which is China, made in China and then on to the Abus 6550 now I'm really pleased this is the one I was talking about earlier 6550 there are lots of security devices in there to try and stop me anti-pick devices and I got through it and I, and I knew what I was actually doing for once I, I wasn't just fumbling around in the dark I actually felt the resistance the counter rotation so I'm really pleased about that then I came across this little one from work and I managed to do this one but it actually raked a union lock it actually, an A2 it actually raked now you're supposed to take them apart I think this is the only one that actually comes apart none of these other locks come apart they don't and finally my challenge at the moment is this one this is the 8550 Abusa 8550 I have had this one open but as I said I definitely didn't do it skillfully I was just fumbling around and it opened so that's my locks let's go back to the vise and let's open well let's open our, we'll not talk about this one because there's plenty of videos out with this one. Let's, let's open this little yellow one here. Let's get that one open first, shall we? Ooh, wrong way around. <laughs> I will now get the camera set up and lighting set up for a better angle so you can actually see it being picked a bit better. Now before we start, what I want you to see is the pins on the inside. Look. See the pins moving up? There you go. See that? Yeah. See that one springing down? I push it up and it springs down back on itself. There. Okay. Let's make a start on this one. So I've moved the camera a bit. Let's let's have a go with this one, shall we? And there we are.
So let's move on to this egret lock. This is made in China, this one. It is very poorly made. You can get your arm down there, let alone a bleeding shim. So these locks are shimmable, that's another lesson. And also when you sit this one on in the vise, you tighten it up. The movement on the cylinder is awful. Look. Wobbling all over the place. Very poorly made lock. Now this lock opens either in two seconds or fifty seconds. It's sometimes it just goes with you. Oop. Sometimes it works with you, sometimes it doesn't want to play. So let's just see how it goes. I'll pick that up in a bit. Here we go. We'll use that one for now. So let's hope I can get this one nice and quickly. Taking a bit of time because the camera's on, as it would do. There we go. Got it. Absolutely no skill whatsoever. No skill. Just using this city rate. No skill. So what we will do, we'll have a quick look at the training lock, which you know most people start with really they're not very expensive at all they usually come in kits you can see the springs you can see the pins on the inside and the idea is to line everything up so that the pins will push up into place see that one moving number one moving there look see this I don't know if you can see or I will try and get closer there's two pins in there you've got to try and line up the lower one with the cylinder which pushes it along that's of course it's, it's hard to do on the side so you can see all the pins moving as I work my way through the lock different sized pins oh yeah shot very difficult to do this for a noob there you go see all the pins moving there that's your training lock I hope you found that interesting. I am all fingers and thumbs. Yes, I know that. I'm still learning. Like I said, this, I'm, I don't, I'm not teaching anybody because I don't know myself. I'm just showing you what I'm doing and the fun I'm having. And it's so therapeutic. It really is. When you get the lock open, there's this sense of joy that you get from it. It's really bizarre. And it's a sport. I'm not learning to break into people's homes, which is what people naturally do. And a lot of the lock pickers, actually, they, their identity is kept very, very quiet. Because they're very proficient at what they do. So they, you never see their faces very often. Now, people like me, now, I'm only playing at it. I'm only ever going to play at it. I'm never going to be entering competitions. I just want to learn a bit and have a bit of fun, at, you know, on these winter evenings and that sort of thing. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm not bothered if people know that I can pick the odd lock or two because my mates might find that comes in handy if they lock themselves out or something. So I'm not really bothered about that. I'm never going to go into picking somebody's house. And, and, you know, I mean, not especially when you do, <laughs> do a broadcast to the world that this is what you're doing. So, <laughs> no, it's not for me. It's something that I just enjoy doing and I, and I quite like it. So I've picked up a little bit and I'm having a bit of fun with it. I hope you enjoyed it. And, um, you know, I'll be getting on the bank soon, but when, I don't know, hopefully next weekend, I've got, depends on the weather, if the weather's absolutely fantastic, I'm going to be out with my rifle, if, if the weather's a little bit damp and a little bit drizzly, I'll probably end up at Clearwater, something like that, I don't know, or maybe even going for a walk, maybe even an overnight, I, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing yet, I've got, I've got so much to do, so much to get in, until next time, thank you very much for joining me, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh, um, what do you think to my new chair? My new, my new recliner, my leather chair up in my man cave. Next to my drink cabinet, which is rather empty. Yes, yeah, so I keep drinking it all, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, so my new, my new chair. It's actually the one we had downstairs. 
but now we've finished the front room and living room we've moved into that now so I always wanted this up here I want to get my new Xbox Xbox Halo big big TV Halo over there bang that's the plan <laughs> I love Halo it's a great game 